All right, Mary, we'd love to have you on. Thanks for having me back. As always, all right? So let's talk about purple martins. Yeah, purple. What do we need to know about purple martins? Okay, well, first a little bit about the birds. So okay. purple martins are native to North America. Mm -hmm. They're uh, the largest member of the swallow family. And what's great about swallows is they eat a lot of insects. Good. Purple martins are really unique too because they're colony nesters. So they like to nest together. You're not gonna get them <laughs> nesting just a single nest here and there. They like to be in groups of at least six or more. Wow, wow. And what's really neat is if you can attract purple martins, which we're gonna talk about in just a okay. little bit, they will come back year after year to the same colony. And they are here usually starting in late February okay. and they're coming um, to us from Brazil. So they're here, they have their breeding season here in North America, oh. and then they are spending their winters in Brazil. Wow. Um, they really rely on people too, because east of the Mississippi, they rely exclusively on man-made structures. Wow. Yeah, so a really interesting bird. A lot of people want to attract them, especially because, not only because they eat a lot of insects, but they're really interesting birds to watch. Um, they're really uh, acrobatic in the air. <laughs> they make a really kind of sweet sound. Um, and so it's just a really interesting bird um, to attract to your area. Right. The fact that they're eating insects helps. Yes. I mean, that really does. I think that's a big draw for yes. a lot of people in that attracting them. a huge them. draw, especially yeah. here in the South, right? Yes. 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 <laughs> so how do we attract those purple martins to our homes? Okay, well, not everybody's going to be able to attract them huh. because you need the right habitat. Huh. And for purple martins, they want somewhat of an open area. They don't mind being close to houses, but probably at least 30 feet from a house and about 40 um, to maybe 100 feet from trees. So give them a little wow. bit of distance and open area because they like to hunt for insects there, but also kind of like an open area to get down into their colony. Um, so that's the first thing is you have to have the right location. Okay. Um, you also kind of have to make a commitment because these birds are coming back year after year to the same colony. So you have to oh. put in that commitment of maintaining your colony. Okay. Um, so you have a couple different options on attracting purple martins. The first thing you want to think about is what type of housing are you going to okay. use? So the, there's three different types of housing. Um, the first and the most historic, how the swallows first started um, coming around people are natural gourds. Um, so you can hang a bunch of those up, you put a hole in them. The downfall of the natural gourds now is that you can't monitor them or clean them out. So you uh, need to replace okay. them year after year. Okay. Um, the second option, which is my favorite option, are artificial gourds. And we'll talk a little bit more about some additions to those. And then the last way is the large house-like um, buildings that have different compartments in them. So I'm right. sure a lot of people have seen those, seen those before too. Yeah. yeah. Um, so there's a few drawbacks to those as well, but um, they work just as fine. And a lot of people use a mix of the house and the gourds. Wow. Yeah. So. So once you decide what type of housing you want, then you need to get a system. And so they like to be at least 12 to 18 feet up in the air. Okay. Um, now, most of the time uh, it's recommended that you check your gourds. So you're um, bringing those gourds down maybe every week to check to see if you have parasites, are your, mm. are your birds building nests or laying eggs yet? And then also do you have unwanted guests in there like right. starlings and house sparrows? Okay. Okay. Um, so being able to check them um, is a really good option too because then you can identify some of those issues and stop them before they kind of overtake your colony. Wow. Um, that being said, there's three predators that we want to worry about in oh our boy. colony, okay? okay? So the first one um, is raccoons. So ra raccoons, raccoons, yes, okay. so raccoons are great climbers. Oh. And if you think about a bunch of these gourds filled with little helpless young oh. or eggs, it's pretty attractive to predators as okay. well. So a simple predator guard on the bottom of your pole system is going to work for raccoons and for snakes. Yes. Mm -hmm. The other predators that we have for purple martins are going to be hawks and owls. And wow. now they've done a lot of work. We've done a lot of research studying all these different colonies across the United States. And they have found some ways to prevent hawks and owls from getting into your mm. um, gourds. So this style, you can attach uh, predator guards. This is an owl guard. It's going to stop the owls from getting too close to your gourd wow. and reaching a that? foot in there. Okay. Um, and then you can also put a little porch on your gourds and have some predator guards like this attached to your porch. Huh. There's a lot of options besides just the regular, what we call a super gourd. Um, you've got ones that have tunnels and porches. Those are all kind of newer additions that are coming up and you can retrofit, 
retrofit your old gourds as well. Those are some major predators. Oh, wow. oh, that is so interesting. Yeah, it's really interesting. Um, I was telling a story earlier when I first started at Lichterman Nature Center about okay. five years ago, we had our colony. So they come back year after year. And we had a hawk and an owl problem at our colony. So they were taking some of our young. We attach predator guards and our success rate um, has gone up like 500%. Wow. So predator guards are a definite must. They work. Yes, right. they absolutely work. And that's a definite must if you're gonna maintain a colony. That. Now I see you have the binoculars there. So of course what's I the don't. Purpose? Yeah, I don't go too far without right. without having my binoculars nearby. But this is really neat because you can watch your colony from a distance. Um, there are ways to tell the males from the females and first year birds as well. So this is a good way to see who's nesting in which gourd. At Lichterman Nature Center, we label all of our gourds so we can say, oh, in A we have a. Um, adult male and a sub-adult <laughs> female, okay. stuff like that. So we monitor them and um, check them weekly to see what, what's going on inside of their gourds right now. So I have to ask, so how do you tell the difference between a male and a female? Okay, so the males are the ones that most people think about. They're kind of where they get their name, Purple Martin. Okay. So they have kind of this iridescent purple, um, dark blue color. And the females are gonna have that same color on their head, but they're gonna have a lot of white on their chest as well. Hmm. So. Um, and then one thing I forgot to mention okay. um, is starling resistant entrances. That's, okay. We really need that here in the Mid-South because starlings can get into your gourds and they will kill young oh. um, and sometimes even injure adults. So the style that will prevent a starling from getting in is more of a crescent shape. So okay. the open round hole starlings could can get into. So you wanna have some, something that's going to prevent the starlings from getting in as well. And that will do it. That will do it, just changing the whole size or the whole shape. The whole shape. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's a big deal. Wow. If people wanted more information about Purple Martins, I mean, where do they need to go to get that information? Sure. Well, they can always visit us at Lichterman Nature Center. Good. We have an active colony. Um, they start arriving in late February, and then they kind of wrap up their breeding season in June and July. Um, there's also a great organization called the Purple Martin Conservation yeah. Association, and they have great scientific um, research that they're doing. They also have a lot of different options for right. housing. So okay. that's a great one stop for all your Purple Martin needs. Good stuff, Mary. Yeah. Appreciate that. It's good to hear about those Purple Martins. Yeah. yeah, see them all the time in the air, just diving and. Yeah, they're you know, really flying. neat they're to watch. Neat. They're, right. they're pretty acrobatic, um, right. so it's pretty fun to watch them. Well, good stuff. Well, I hope folks come out and see you and learn a little bit more about those Purple Martins. So thank Absolutely. you much. Thank you. All right. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. To find out more information on this topic, just click on the familyplotgarden.com link in the description.